All right, pardon the uh, portrait view, but we're going to, I'm going to do a commentary on the first three pages of my, uh, I call it Masters of the Universe, One Hero. This was based on uh, Paul Gerard's work. Now, Paul Gerard, very talented co concept artist for major motion pictures and I don't know about TV shows, but I know for pictures. And here are some of the uh, gruesome art, gruesome characters. That looks like Hordak, doesn't it? There's so, so many. This is the, uh, this could double for Merman, but a, a less fatter Merman. There's Trapjaw. There's all these obscure. His idea was to use surrealism more than being scary or disgusting or gross or frightening or horrific. Because Paul Gerard's not about being horrific. He's about illustrating this. Hi, Paul, if you're watching this. I think I'm posting this on Facebook. So uh, if you want to see my storytelling, uh, it should be in um, Maestro Drake you know, YouTube. It's in the playlist, Masters of the Universe, One Hero. In the You just have to check out my channel. Anyway, whatever. Whenever you get to. But this is uh, the beginning. So here we see... This is a this is a tune style of it, just, to, just because one, I would want to tell a lot of story, and two, um, it's a lot easier for me to just kind of put it down rather than try to do real life exact purport, human proportions uh, concepts, just tune concepts, something you see in story in storyboarding more than uh, concept. So here is Skeletor's uh, insignia. So. <clears throat> Actually, this was more for uh, this guy here, not for Skeletor, because Skeletor had his own thing going on. So uh, here is Skeletor's, right? You don't see that kind of thing there. But then there's another piece, if I could find it right quick. Hopefully it doesn't take me eight hours to find it. There it is. So there's something like that here with the... I think it's a, is that a tongue sticking out, Paul? Do you know? It's like a, so it looks like you took the same guy. Did this guy come first or did Kel, or did Skeletor come first? I'm thinking maybe this guy came first. So that's why I designed here was this guy here. So uh, the helmet here has like a crisscross thorn, so you can't pull the helmet off his head. And I added a uh, Rob Zombie icon iconography here, Rob Zombie beard hanging off him. So here's the, the insignia, but here's the, uh, the, and it ends up looking like Paul Gerard a little bit uh, as Keldor. And you can kind of see the shoulders. This is obscured by Beastman, but there's Panthor here. And Panthor has black teeth. He has shiny black teeth and he's got chains there. He's got black armor. And on his face, this is based on some of the uh, art you did for some creatures that have crystals going on them. So in a Paul Girardian way, I added these green crystals that are stuck in the cat. And the green crystals would protect anybody from harming him. So they're like a force field. Uh, they only react to people who are going to harm him. So they're emotionally charged. And there's uh, like a poison ivy uh, sort of like lace saddle so that you, you grab the poison oak handles and then you ride Panthor. So you have the brave the least, you know, you have to you have to overcome your fears and then ride Panthor. And then there's Evil Lin to his right. Evil Lin is very similar, but I added the uh, the fifth pike, unlike uh, Paul Gerard's uh, concept. I added because I like the 2000X cartoon a bit more. And her idea, her uh, concept, uh, it, I kind of nudged it more towards indigenous witch doctor living on an island, you know. Aboriginal, like, um, like you know, like the uh, Andamanese or the Az early Mayans, Aztecs, Homo sapien, right? Very primitive, but they are rich in magic. So dark arts. And the dark arts have a limit in the light hemisphere. It's like Green Lantern's, it's like uh, Green Lantern's power ring, right? It, it can only, you need to go back to the dark hemisphere to charge the ring. So that's why it's so important to, like, watch the dark magic. So Evil Lynn here looks very uh, upper class, but in the uh, art here, I don't know what Paul was going for, but here, and I had the, the mascara run on her face, 
and very, very primitive looking uh, peacock dress that goes down to her ankles. And here's Beast Man, which I took the idea of a rhesus monkey and then stuck it on a, uh, you know, Bigfoot. He looks more like Grizzlor than, than Beast Man, but I guess with Grizzlor, I could figure out something else. What would Grizzlor look like? He would look scarier than Beast Man, I guess. Because they're both kind of, they function the same way, but Grizzlor would be a little bit different. And uh, up here is Triclops, which I took the concept of the CGI cartoon that came out two years ago, along with Revelation. And it's a robot that possesses different people and takes over their bodies. So that's sort of the, the it's the uh, 2021 concept of Triclops. But it looks more like the warrior of old. And, he, and just like Paul Gerard would stack, you take all these little robot things and stack them on, stack them on, like stacking on the buildings, right? And... Here, there's a hole in his head, and his mouth is like, oh, like, you know, like, like I'm doing right now, like, like, kind of, kind of stretched out all it, like that. and it's kind of like stretched over his mouth, and there's a, inside this hole in his head is the eye, and the, these things kind of swirl about his head, and he has this electric buzzing sound. Sometimes he talks, sometimes he doesn't, and in the back is Cronus, and what I did for that is I took the, uh, I took the least offensive looking part of Triclops, or not Triclops, uh, of Trapjaw. So there's Evil Lynn. I took, I put the hair in the back, right? And then with Triclops, I kind of used this one, I think. I think this one would be Cronus. Like, like very smooth looking. So I just pretend that's not a, uh, it's not a metal jaw, but it's like a mouth with ugly teeth. And then he turns into this. Uh, I put a hook instead of a uh, needle thread because in real life, you probably would have a giant hook so you could, like if you had a line and you wrote a line across two places in real life, you would have a hook on your helmet and just like hang on by your head and go ride the line between two points, uh, line writing or wire writing, whatever it is. Going across two places, I think of G.I. Joe right now with those, with those uh, bubbles that the G.I. Joe figures would go into. So that's this one. And that's, that's what this one was about. They're just, they're terrifying. And this whole idea was about, uh, I had an idea for like, okay, if you had three or four thieves who were working for Skeletor and they were going to betray him and double cross him, these guys are like frightening monsters. They're like Frankenstein and Dracula, Bride of Frankenstein, the Wolfman, uh, the, the creature from the Black Lagoon, right? The Invisible Man. Uh, Freddy, Jason, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre guy, whatever that guy's, uh, Pinhead, uh, you know, here, here's this guy. I put like, I threw like a whole potato sack with, uh, leaves sticking out of him to keep him cool, but it looks like it has a gothic look and Keldor just chops his head off. That's, you know, he's not going to have, he's not going to deal with him. That's, this is, this is like run from the monsters kind of thing. And here we have Evil Lynn grabs a, a boy not not yet of age and this is a very controversial scene but she kisses him and he turns into dust and that's exactly how evil lynn works uh beast man takes a woman and then just pulls her apart which is horrific um and i try to do it in a way that's not like un completely unsettling you know they're not interested in violating women or doing something really creepy but they're they're just they're just gruesome and here is cronus and he just blasts a hole and I used the sound effect from RoboCop, in which RoboCop would uh, use the the super gun on ED-209, the one that the bad guys had, that they were playing it out in the street, which was like, you know, a simple trick. But he has this super cool machine gun. So he's not trapped jaw yet. And he's got the knee pads there. And uh, they have these sleeves that wrap around their arms. And they have another potato sack on them. And yeah, that's, there's the, those are the innards. So that's what this was. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, I'm going to try to see if I can do more. Do I have a plan for a long story? No, not necessarily. I know how it ends, but I don't know how the middle the transitions and stuff. I know Extendar will be in the next part. Extendar versus Triclops, and then we see the Elders. So that will be on white paper. So we, it's I do a black and white technique and then very lightly put in color, kind of like Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow. So there you go. That's it. So uh, thanks for tuning in.